Welcome to another episode of The Epic Family Road Trip. Mom gets a lot of questions about her antique ringer washer and how we do laundry off the grid. So this morning she decided to give us a demonstration of how it works. Something can work perfectly every day and never have a problem until you say, let me show you how well it works. This morning the ringer decided not to cooperate and it really hit mom's funny bone. Wait, ugh. <laughs> Fail. Now look at her shirt. <laughs> and you know mom, once she gets the giggles, there's no stopping. We hope okay. you enjoyed this demonstration. <laughs> we'll try again okay. next week. We're not doing this shit. <laughs> We got a message that our Starlink package had arrived at the marina. Out here on the island, we have no phone or cellular service. Up until now, we have been connecting to the outside world through a traditional satellite internet connection. Our connection has been expensive, slow, and unreliable at best. There are times when uploading a video to YouTube would take 24 to 30 hours, so you can imagine our excitement when our Starlink dish arrived. One of the things we love about living out here is that we are off the grid and spend most of our time outside in nature rather than in front of a screen. Put it on the stand, it clicks in, then you run the wire and plug it in, and then you connect it. That being said, having some kind of connectivity is a necessity both for our safety as well as for continuing to create content on YouTube. Well, we finally got our Starlink. This is something we've been excited about. Um, as many of you know, Starlink's been out for like a, since 2020, but uh, it's been their generation one and what they call beta testing. Now, this, as of uh, April of 2022, they released their gen two satellite dishes, which are these squared off dishes. That's basically all I know about the change on the dish itself, but I think they also, unlocked like 400 megabytes of potential download speed on their satellite so pretty cool we'll see what we get even if we got like 40 up here or 80 that'd be insane compared to older sat uh, technology okay well that's plugged in this is a rough like kind of we're mocking it up we just set it out there on the rocks and then we just wired it in we'll make a permanent wiring so it protects the cable and then also we'll find the best spot for our wi-fi so our Starlink is actually fully mounted now. Um, we have had this big tower here. It had an old analog TV on it since like the 50s and we always were looking at it as kind of like an ugly thing that didn't have any use for us. But uh, you know, I, my dad always thought there will be a use for it one day, whether that's putting up a radio thing or something. And getting Starlink, we, it was the perfect use. The thing literally just clicked right into the old mount and we got it hooked up there permanently. We still got to wire it in and all, but we tested the Wi-Fi speeds. You can download a movie in like a couple minutes, like at least um, doing the Wi-Fi speed test, it was saying it could get 80, 60 to 80 megabytes per second. And that's just in its first five minutes of being set up. It says that in 12 hours, it'll figure out its obstacles and everything. And that's kind of like the full setup, I guess, is within 12 hours. But already that's just a insane difference from the old Wi-Fi that we used to get up here. Like literally we'd get 400 to 800 kilobytes per second, which isn't even one megabyte per second. Now we're getting 
the bad Wi-Fi is like gonna be 70 megabytes per second. So for uploading videos and everything, our upload speeds are also at 13 to 36. So that's huge for us. That's actually like the biggest we've ever seen. So it'll be much easier for us to upload videos. So just as a final thing with the Starlink, getting the wiring done, we just run it around the cabin. It's coming down that tower, around the cabin, under our deck, and then we're gonna drill a hole through the deck feed the wire through, get it plugged in, and take up all the slack so it's tight, it's not running on the ground, and then we're gonna silicone and uh, seal the hole properly. It'll literally probably only be as thick as this wire, but uh, we'll still get it all sealed up nice and reconnected, and then it's done. It's set up like, it's set up really, really nice. Time to get our cast iron pans back into shape. It looks like during our two years away, the cast iron picked up some moisture and are now quite rusty. Not to worry, these can be fully restored and seasoned back to perfect condition with a little bit of patience and a lot of elbow grease. The first step is to begin scraping away the rust with a rust eraser. You won't get all of the rust off with this tool, but scrape away as much as you can. Oh, wow. The next step is to soak the pan in a mixture of equal parts vinegar and water for one to two hours depending on how rusty it is. Now that it had some time to soak, Take it out of the vinegar water and give it another good scraping with a steel wool scrubber. Well, it comes right off. Alright, so it took most of it off. It was pretty thick, like really deep rust. I'd never seen it like that before, where it had really built up thick spots on it. Um, so I'm gonna soak it again for another two hours and then work on it a little bit more before starting the first round of seasoning. I'll probably season all of my pans um, maybe three times, four if it needs it. But yeah, at least it's getting somewhere. The final step is to season the pan by heating it up over fire, then rubbing your favorite vegetable or grapeseed oil into the iron as it cools. This step can be repeated two or three times as needed. Once seasoning is complete, the pans already look so much better. We've been wanting to make our own bacon for a long time, and now we're going to give it a try. Here we have a pork belly that we plan to cure and smoke so that it can be sliced into bacon. We start by cutting the pork belly into three pieces and adding a dry rub brine mixture of equal parts salt and brown sugar. Next, we place the pork belly in Ziploc bags and then into the fridge for six days, turning the bags each day. The brine will begin to cure the meat as well as draw a lot of moisture out of the pork belly, preparing it for the smoker. While the pork belly is curing, we are going to go outside and build a smoker house which is another project we've been wanting to do for some time. A, a, a small thing, like about like that high, a foot, yeah. just for safety reasons. And then we'll probably have a tin door that goes right to the ground, you know? You think, or should we do, if we have enough wood, I'd love to do it wood. Sure. Yeah. That can be lifted off. Mm-hmm. Really simple, but what I was saying on the door, on the inside, we would drill in mm. that. that. Okay. 
These cinder blocks have been laying here in this position since we purchased this island over 20 years ago. We can never quite figure out what they were for, but now they are going to be repurposed and put to good use. A couple of years ago, we barged in all of the materials required to build an addition on our cabin. Under these tarps are the leftover materials. We are going to build our smoker using whatever we can salvage from this pile. And you can get dad pickaxe. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if that's what he was making because. Yeah, let's get this one on, then the thing won't fall over, and then we can get this. Pete. Really? 
Pretty good progress today. We've got the walls and the whole structure built. All there is left to do is put the steel roof on, um, the flashing around the edge, and then build the front walls and the door. We're going to put two logs like this right here, and then finish finish facing it, and then we'll build the door. Something that we can just pick up, take off, get a little smoky fire going in there. All right, and then we got to build a couple of shelf shelving units, so we'll be able to hang meats at the top and then lay out you know anything from fish to whatever to make jerky smoke any kind of meat we want so the boys uh built this little clay circle years ago when they're experimenting building a bloomery furnace and it's actually from clay on the property here and uh, it's been drying all these years and it makes it probably make a perfect base for our smoke fire and so we're gonna just put that in the middle and then we bought some um, uh, wire grating, really thick wire grating, and we're going to use that for the shelves, but I think we'll build a circle and make the fire inside there and then have a cap for it so that it smokes. making the uh, skill saw blade doll so uh, when you don't have a hardware store nearby you break up the old saw and do it the old way it's kind of nice when living on a remote island resourcefulness is a valuable trait Going to a hardware store for supplies can take an entire day, so we have learned to work with what we have and to save all extras, because you never know when you'll need it. For example, we are using deck screws that were left over from another project and stored in the workshop. They were a bit too long for this application, but worked fine when Peter ground off the ends that had come through the boards. Mom had to get very resourceful working with the stain she had. One was too red for her liking, another too dark. By mixing the two and then sanding down the boards once they were dried, she was able to achieve the look she was after.
All right, so that was a fun Father's Day um, project. And it was really neat because we used all the material that we already had from previous years of um, when we did the build and just little tiny repairs and things. And um, so that was really special. And it was fun to see the boys working with dad. They, I mean, they do all the time, but this was pretty neat to just do something that we've always wanted to do and that's make a meat smoker. So we have the baking going right now and it has a few more days and then we can fire this up for the first time. But yeah, so I hope you guys are having a wonderful Father's Day. There you go. Well, it's the last time it'll look like that. <laughs> For our first fire, we're using wood pellets from the Traeger smoker. In the meantime, we're collecting hardwood chips for future fires. Alright, so this pork belly has been in a brine in the fridge for seven days. Carol's been flipping it every day and a lot of the moisture has come out of it so now it's just perfect it looks like bacon already but it's got to go in the smoker for a couple of hours so pete's got a good smoke fire going and so i'm going to pat these dry take them out to the smoker and we'll let them sit for about three hours We would like to wish a very happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. You play an incredibly important role, not only in the well-being of your own family, but in the strength of the fabric of all society. May God bless you all. Happy, happy Father's, Father's Day, Dad. Dad. We love you, Dad. We're so thankful for you and everything that you've done for us and your amazing example to us and all of the precious memories and experiences that we've had with you and gotten to share with you 
and all of the adventures big and small that we've had together and we can't wait for many more. Happy Father's Day, Dad. Thank you for always being there and being such a great example and teaching us and pushing us to do bigger and better things. Love you, Dad. Happy Father's Day, Dad. I'm so thankful for everything we've got to do together and you know, throughout my whole life, but especially over the last seven years, we've really got to spend every day, almost every single day together, and I've you know, got to learn invaluable lessons. I'm just really thankful to be your son and thank you for everything.